The White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce and On Location TV 19 are proud to present Your Business Matters, dedicated to your business needs. The White Bear Area Chamber is a nonprofit business organization serving as an advocate for the White Bear Area and its business community. Now, here is the Executive Director of the White Bear Area Chamber and the host of Your Business Matters, Tom Snell. Welcome to Your Business Matters, brought to you by the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce. Each month, we interview community leaders and local business owners so you can be informed about the developments in your community. This month, I am pleased to welcome Ramsey County Commissioner Victoria Reinhardt and the Mayor of Maplewood, Nora Slawick. On our program today, we will review what's happening with the Rush Line Corridor. This is a major transportation initiative that will impact the White Bear area. Thank you for being on our show today. I appreciate it very much. The first question I want to ask is, what is the Rush Line Corridor? And please feel free to answer both of you. Okay. So thank you. Victoria? Well, <clears throat> first of all, um, just to, so people know what our roles are, yes. I am chair of the Rush Line Corridor Task Force. Okay. Mayor Slawick chairs the Policy Advisory Committee, which I'll let her explain, but basically the Policy Advisory Committee is beyond the task force so that they will come up with the locally preferred alternative, and I'm going to let her get into that. The corridor itself is an 80-mile corridor from downtown St. Paul, Union Depot, to Hinckley. What is being studied right now is the uh, portion of that that is from the Union Depot to Forest Lake, and that's where we're looking at the locally preferred alternative. There are 23 members of the task force, and that includes the cities and townships and counties that are involved or touch the corridor in some way. And so the, the Policy Advisory Committee um, is working to on the pre-project development phase of the Rush Line Corridor. Okay. And then we're going to be looking at isolating, you know, what is going to be the final um, corridor, which is called the Locally Preferred Alternative. And so we're a, a subset of the task force. It involves elected officials and community members um, all the way from Union Depot up through Forest Lake, uh, which obviously involves uh, White Bear Lake. And Joe Emerson, the mayor, is um, on the, the pack. Good. Okay, now getting back uh, to specifically what it is. What are, uh, when you say the Rush Line Corridor, uh, you're looking, obviously, to do things that are going to improve the flow of traffic. How are you going to, uh, what are the options that you're looking at to improve the flow of traffic from point A to point B? You know, there's, there's really um, four options on the, the table, Tom. Okay. I mean, we, we know that there's growing traffic in the, the northeast Absolutely. metro area, right? Yep. And we know that that's going to increase congestion. And so there's, there's four options we're looking at. Um, two are on the Ramsey County um, right away, uh, which, which goes up sort of the Vento Trail and up to, to White Bear. Um, one involves uh, what would be um, bus rapid uh, transit uh, going up that corridor. The other is DMU, which is a diesel. Uh, multiple unit. Mon multiple unit, <laughs> which was, is a little what, more What does that mean, a efficient. diesel multiple unit? Well, it's, it's the type of um, vehicle. So, you know, a bus rapid transit, everybody knows what a, what a bus looks like, but it's, these buses look more like sort of light rail, and a DMU is, is basically a diesel um, version. Looks a lot like... Um, uh, light rail, but uh, it operates effectively and it's very efficient because it's a diesel driven and could work in that corridor. And then we're looking at two options on actually White Bear Avenue. Uh, so one would be again, you know, potentially the bus rapid transit, even a, potentially a, a guided um, a guideway, which is a dedicated lane or an arterial um, version, which would be going in the traffic as, as it is right now. The other options that are being looked at also are light rail transit um, and the difference between DMU and LRT um, is that um, DMU does not have the overhead. Okay, and then again, cables, DMU is? Diesel multiple unit. Okay. And <laughs> light rail transit is LRT. Um, and some of the um, 
technology changes that have taken place even in the last few years have really opened up the possibilities where you can have um, a bus or LRT or DMU um, <laughs> that would be in mixed traffic in some of the pinch yeah. points. And there are a couple of pinch points. Um, could be in a dedicated guideway in other areas. So cool. we've got a lot of, of different options. And um, one thing that I do want to point out is that from the very beginning, Rushline has um, made a commitment to trail and rail or transit coexisting so that we don't uh, eliminate trails and in fact we make them part of the system. Absolutely. What does that mean? Well, what it means is that we have um, a trail connection. Obviously, we have the Vento Trail. If that were the option that were chosen. And again, what is the Vento Trail? The Vento Trail, um, well, it's part of the trail system. We've got, um, it basically runs uh, between uh, Wiper Avenue and Highway 61. Um, my Costco <laughs> and yeah. all of that. Is that for like the bike, for people that ride bicycles or biking um, and walking? Okay, right. So back That's in the okay. old days, when there used yep. to be freight trains that went through yeah. that area, and then that was converted into the bike trails and so forth. But you know what's interesting to residents, I think, in Maplewood is there's always been a sign that says, you know, and along the way of the trail, it says this is um, owned Teacher by the Ramsey, yeah. Carol, Ramsey County Rail okay. Authority. Okay, right. So it's owned by the Rail Authority. Okay. Now. So, but what it means is when you have the transit options, we want to make sure that we're talking about multimodal, and that includes bikes and pedestrians. So wherever we determine this is going to go, we want to make sure that that option is still there. Again, even with that, there are some pinch points that we can deal with. Mm -hmm. But it's really important that we get this transit in place. Um, the reason that it was chosen for um, Union Depot to White Bear Lake or Union Depot all the way to Forest Lake and the different modes are because that is where the ridership is, that's where the cost effectiveness is, that's where the economic development and the equity issues How's are. How's it going to help, uh, first of all, uh, for economic development, I want to go into that a little yes. bit. Uh, you've that's got uh, some various options you mentioned. One would be uh, to have a, uh, I'll call it b b rapid bus transit. That means you've got a bus that goes on its own lane, right, right so exactly. that it can um, stop at certain places, but it's got its right. own dedicated lane. Another option that you mentioned, I think, would be to have a bus that would be just more buses, you yeah, know, that would go on on quicker. whatever road yeah. or street that you would have. And then the other option would be some sort of a look would look like a would look like light rail, but it would really be a bus that goes on diesel. Diesel, yep. And, and then and light rail. Light rail still and then on light the table. rail. So yeah. um, Economic development. Uh, how how are e any of these options going to impact economic development? What what are your thoughts on that? And I'd like to ask both of you uh, that specific question. You know, I, I'll talk a little bit about Maplewood. You know, okay. for for Maplewood, I mean, we really see it as potentially a, an economic engine driver. We, Even though your uh, Maplewood is pretty much fully developed, you still see that. Well, absolutely, oh. because it brings people into the area of of the Maplewood Mall of St. John's. People who have medical appointments, mm -hmm. um, it brings customers uh, to our area. And so we, we really think that it's important. We have an area of Frost and English that's mm -hmm. being developed. We have a new housing um, development there. If we can either get it to go near there or we have um, circular buses that, that go from the main line out to that area, sure. um, it still becomes uh, much more about what we know um, today's consumers, particularly the, mill the millennials are interested in, which is um, being able to take transit. I mean, they want that option. So this brings people in an easy way out mm -hmm. to Maplewood, and, and we're in favor of that. Okay. Victoria, what are your thoughts? Um, the Reinhardt. economic development um, is pretty amazing when you look at what's happened on some of the corridors, not only in our area, but mm -hmm. also around the country. Um, the redevelopment, I guess one thing, backing up just a little bit here again, is that Ramsey County is the only fully developed county in Minnesota which means we have redevelopment that is going on. Um, and when you look at uh, Central Corridor and the yep. revitalization of University Avenue, clearly fully developed, but the redevelopment is putting an economic engine into that area that is incredible. Uh, the same thing happened on the lines in Minneapolis and other places. So it is, in many cases, it's um, beefing up what's already there or redevelopment, depending on, you know, what people want to do. 
it's also something that is, if you have a dedicated okay. line, um, a guideway of mm -hmm. some kind, even if there's some mixed traffic that's involved with it, you have much more economic development than you will with an arterial mm -hmm. uh, bus rapid transit. Mm -hmm. Arterial, you'll have re economic development right at the stations, but with um, a dedicated line, which makes sense because business owners know that that's not going to move where an okay, arterial okay. bus could. I also would like to uh, understand uh, when will there be a report done that will kind of outline the economic advantages of having this. Now, I believe that That's both of you are, are convinced that this is going to happen. I would imagine that part of this process is going to be to have a report done that will show mm -hmm. why this is important for economic reasons. Yeah, we're, we're definitely, you know, um, working our way through the process. Right mm -hmm. now we're in that, again, the pre-project development <coughs> phase. And the economic development is important. We're, we're, this is important to residents. This is important to businesses. This is important to chambers of commerce. Um, this is important to the entire community. Uh, as, I don't have an exact date of when that would happen, but we are looking at um, the value or meeting with businesses along the way. But this will be part the of the process. It goes through, forward. Uh, you'll, you'll, it is. This will be done as part of the process as you move yes. forward in the in the planning. With the pre-project development study, that is an important aspect of it. Okay. You have the ridership, you have the cost, you have the economic development, you'll have the equity issues. All of that comes into the final decision on what the policy advisory committee is going to recommend um, as the locally preferred alternative. So all of that information is included in that. Once that is done, and we've had, I, I do want to point out that we are very transparent in our process yep. and have had pop-up meetings and public meetings and hearings and Facebook and all kinds of social media uh, things that have gone on. Once we get closer to having more information, we will start that process again. And so at each phase, we've made sure that we've kept the public involved and their input is so critically important. Great. And, um, Commissioner Reinhardt and uh, Mayor uh, Slawick, uh, I have some more questions for you, but I need to take a break uh, for some other chamber activities that are coming up. Now I have a quick announcement about a very important event coming up. On Thursday, September 29th, we have a membership meeting featuring Boris Melchek, the CEO of Cortec. Come and hear how Mr. Melchek came to Minnesota with less than $100 and built a multinational corporation right here in White Bear Township. The Chamber offers a number of events which are open to the public. We invite you to participate. Take a look at our website, www.whitebearchamber.com. Welcome back to uh, Your Business Matters. I wanted to continue on our discussion about uh, the cost of the uh, program. There's going to be an analysis done then on the various options that are being discussed by the, uh, by the task force, I would imagine. That would be bus, uh, the, uh, the rapid uh, transit for uh, rail, and then also uh, the other bus line that we talked about earlier. And that'll be part of it, and they'll go through and explain the cost, I would imagine, and then also ridership issues, right? Yes, and that's a huge part of the right. project development study and the information that's being narrowed down. Um, so it goes with mode, cost, ridership, and there are environmental concerns. All of this is okay. rolled into the analysis. Um, clearly, cost and ridership are incredibly important, but the economic development factors here 
are, in my opinion, anyhow, equally as important. Great. So all of those factors come into play as we are narrowing our, our focus on what makes the most sense. And that's where that all goes through the Policy Advisory Committee. Again, the Policy Advisory Committee is the one that comes up with the locally preferred alternative. And then it comes back to the communities, the cities, the townships, uh, the counties, and then it comes back to the task force. Okay, right, so, so cost so is, is really important. I mean, it's important for our consumers and our res residents to understand that, but we do different combinations of costs, so cost mm -hmm. in ridership, cost in economic development, mm -hmm. and kind of weighing those pros and cons of sure. what's going to be the best route. Do you think there's anything that you can learn from uh, what happened out in the western suburbs, you know, with the issues that they've had related to... Uh, their rail project. Yeah, I, um, I mean, I think we can. I mean, one thing is the East Metro needs to have a, a, a line out here. So that's, right. that's one takeaway. But I think the, the fact is that um, we've been able to move our process more quickly because we uh, learned how the, the bottlenecks with their process with um, Botno. We also both uh, serve on the gateway, or known as the gold line, which is going to be BRT from Union Depot out to Woodbury. Mm -hmm. And so we've seen how, how that process has worked. And so I, I think there are lessons learned, mm -hmm. and I think that's allowed us to move quicker um, on our process. We know, though, Tom, this is a, a long process, right? right? Even yeah, when there's yeah, a locally and, preferred and that's alternative. that's the next question I yeah. was going to ask. When you say long process. Uh, is this something that we're going to have to wait 40 years for or <laughs> is it, uh, I mean, is it something that'll happen in our lifetime? Oh, I, uh, yeah. I, the, the, uh, if it's, if it, I mean, the different options would take different amounts of time, I would exactly. imagine. It's, e you know, much easier to have a few more buses coming back and forth than it would be to have some of the other options that mentioned. And I just would like to get kind of a, a snapshot if you could, and I know it's early in the process, but if there's something that you could mention about based on the different options that are out there, what might be a timeline? Okay. And I'm not gonna hold your feet to the fire, right. but just to get an idea about what we're looking at. Well, I can tell you that I've been uh, part of this for a very long time when Rush Line Task Force was formed back in, I think it was 1999 or 1998. So oh, the wow. Rush Line Task Force has been around for a long time. We have taken many steps along the way, including what is now the express uh, bus that's coming from Forest Lake area down into Union Depot. Mm -hmm. That started as a Rush Line uh, project. Uh, the the uh, park and ride at Maplewood Mall is part of the Rush Line. Okay. So what we look at now is once we, the locally preferred alternative is, is chosen, we go through that entire process, we get the federal funding, we go through, there are a lot of different steps to it. Each of those phases has a timeline involved. I know that I think what we're looking at is at this point probably the early, I would say by 2025, is probably... Um, being uh, conservative as far as how long it would take. It could be before that. Um, but it all depends on what happens through this process. Yeah. And so, and I think at the time when I first uh, was uh, involved with Rush Line and we named it Rush Line, <laughs> yeah. we looked at, I said it could be about 30 or more years. That's probably all about what it'll be. And I think it's a deliberative process that's important to have all of the transparency that we've built mm -hmm. into this. Now, I wanted to, uh, the other question I have is, uh, would this be a one-size-fits-all type of project? Because you mentioned, one of the things that you mentioned earlier is that this rush line could go all the way up to Higley. And, uh, yes. for example, if it's, if it's rail, uh, would it mean that rail would go from the starting point all the way up to Hinkley, or might there be some different options that could go uh, up, so up the whole area? Yeah, and there's there's some that. different thoughts on that, of course, um, cost related as mm -hmm. well. Is it could um, start out potentially from Union Depot, say, to White Bear, sure, and then the next segment would be White Bear, you know. Forest Lake or to up to Hinkley, and it, it could change modes. I mean, there's some thought that um, it could start out as light rail, then it could go to bus rapid transit and, you know, express bus or different options there. 
Um, we, we know that people have a variety of needs in the areas, commuting in to jobs in the morning, coming back in the evening, um, events in downtown St. Paul to come to, so, so being able to serve the populations. As we look at um, developing the locally preferred alternative and looking at the cost factor, mm -hmm. um, we may go with a, the shorter route and then expand from there. Okay, that's what I was um, um White Bear Lake, I think, is in, in yeah, for yeah. sure um, because we we know it's a big population center and um, that the chamber's been doing great work up there and a lot of people are very interested. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a matter of, of when you put those funding costs together, can we take it all the way up there? Well, and that's, um, again, when we first started and looked at all the different alternatives, the alternative analysis, and then you keep narrowing yep. it down until what makes sense. And that's the bottom line here. What makes sense? for the uh, near future and then beyond that because yes the rush line task force and the corridor is an 80 mile corridor mm -hmm. what we're studying right now is not that yeah, 80 right. mile because it's what makes sense for today yeah real quickly uh, a uh, the 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 corridor hasn't been decided yet has it i mean there are several alternative oh, routes yep. that are being yes. discussed still real quickly what are the routes that are some of the routes that are being looked at well, that's some of what we talked about, sort of the two that are on White Bear and yes. going up White Bear, which, you know, there's there's um, different challenges on White Bear because we yeah. have the set curbs, right? And if you're going to develop the dedicated guideway, there would be a lot of construction. There's the Vento Trail, but then there's um, residents that are very concerned about that as well, and there's environmental concerns. So there's basically two options on yep each um, being considered at this point and narrowing it down between that. We also have the other segment, so with that we're talking mostly from Maplewood to White Bear yes. on that, and then we've been also evaluating options from downtown to Maplewood. Okay. And we've narrowed yep. that down, right now there's eight options, and we'll be going down yeah. to four and then to, to two and, and so forth. Regardless of what we do to get to Maplewood, we have to get to Maplewood Mall. Okay, yep. And then going from Maplewood to White Bear, the other option there is uh, okay. we brought back in okay. Highway 61 right. along yeah. with the Vento Trail. And then if uh, people are interested in finding out more about what's going on with the Rush Line Corridor, what should they do? Well, I think the best is the website and find out okay. when the meetings are. We have a meeting coming up uh, soon. They're, they're every month or two, so they should come to the meetings, um, stay informed, get onto the mailing list, uh, come to our open houses. We're going to be having lots of public open houses. Yep. Uh, tell us what they think. You know, we okay. want feedback. We want the public involved. Great. And there's um, opportunity to provide input through that yeah. website. There's phone numbers. There's um, if if you have an organization and, that wants to have yep. a presentation, we can do and that. And the website too. is. I think it's www.rushline.org. Dot org. Yeah. Right. I want to thank both Ramsey County Commissioner Victoria Reinhardt and the Mayor of Maplewood, Nora Slawick, for joining me today. I'm Tom Snell. Thank you for watching. Your business matters. You've been watching Your Business Matters. For more information on this program or the White Bear Area Chamber, visit whitebearchamber.com or call 651-429-8593.